this day, I still remember exactly where I was when I saw Jurassic Park for the very first time. My dad had just gotten home from a trip overseas, and as he normally did, he brought back a movie or two. I still remember seeing the cover of the case and being completely intrigued by it, not really understanding what I was in for. My dad took me into the bedroom, sat me in front of our old Windows 95 desktop computer, began playing the movie, and gave me a glass of Sprite. My first ever time drinking that particular soda. Anyway, I will never forget that moment where Sam Neill's character stands up in the Jeep, removing his glasses to reveal his absolutely flabbergasted expression. I remember poking my dad and going, Dad, what does he see? What is he looking at? And my dad replies, a dinosaur. I remember beginning to laugh right before the movie cuts from Grant's face to the dinosaur. My laughter cut out like a faulty motor and I was just as flabbergasted at what I was seeing. The reason I bring this up is because I recently went to see Spielberg's latest film, Ready Player One, in glorious 70mm. I had read the book two weeks prior and I had breezed through that thing in a day and I was so excited to see Spielberg's latest offering to cinema. And suffice it to say, I didn't have a moment like I did with Jurassic Park during that film. Oh. Well, I feel sheepish. Now, I'm not going to do a review of Ready Player One as the title of the video should tell you. There are several critics, print and online, who have already reviewed it, and several YouTubers like myself who inevitably will after seeing it too. No, I want to talk about something else. Namely, I want to talk about an epiphany that I had as I was walking back from the theater last night. I remember when the trailers dropped for this film, and there were so many critics and fans and everyone talking about this film, and it was so great to see people get so excited about a Spielberg film again. But there was something that a lot of people said that seemed eerily consistent. This has Steven Spielberg's name written all over it. It actually does. It really does. <laughs> and that was this notion that Ready Player One's subject matter was tailor-made for Spielberg, considering how influential he was in shaping 80s pop culture. You see, for some reason, those statements came to my mind on my walk home, and it reminded me of another film that came out in 1991 that was also directed by Steven Spielberg. Hook starring Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. For those of you who haven't seen Hook, I'm about to drop some major spoilers. So if that isn't how you roll, go watch the film and come back. If you don't care about spoilers or you've already seen the film, let's get into it. In Hook, the protagonist is a middle-aged man named Peter Banning. He is a workaholic and he's a bit of a curmudgeon Grinch. His home life, particularly his relationship with his children, is suffering as a result of this. But it is revealed later in the film that Peter Banning is actually an adult Peter Pan. You are the Pan. You know, THE Peter Pan, the boy who never grew up on Neverland, the brainchild of playwright J.M. Barry. You see, in the film, Peter Banning can't remember his old life and childhood and has to be forced back to Neverland to rescue his children from the evil Captain Hook. And over the course of the film, we see a pretty cool arc as Peter rediscovers his happy thought that makes him fly and become Peter Pan once more. And it leads to a pretty cool moment and why I was reminded of that moment as I was getting out of Ready Player One. Let me just show you the scene that I'm talking about. You won't believe this, but I found my happy thought. Took me three days to find it. Guess what happened when I did? Huh? I went. You know what my happy thought was? It was you. So, in the scene that I just showed, Peter talks about how his children are now his happy thought. The thing that keeps him going. What he finds the most joy from. And, let me just say it, I highly doubt that they would have been his happy thought back when he was just Peter Pan the boy. And this brings me back to what people were saying about Ready Player One and how it is tailor-made for Spielberg and that only Spielberg could do the story justice. See, I think that these people are actually saying that this story is suited for a young Spielberg. 
The One Who Made Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., Indiana Jones, Minority Report, Jurassic Park, over three decades. The young Spielberg, who, as Spielberg himself once put it, was either phenomenally brave or phenomenally stupid. Because, guys, let's face it. Steven Spielberg is a great filmmaker. He has been, he is one, and probably will be for years to come, and the work he has done will live on decades after he's gone. But he isn't the same man that he was in the 70s or the 80s, and his movies are a perfect reflection of that. Ever since, really, The Color Purple, Spielberg has slowly but surely matured as a filmmaker, and his forte these days are those same kind of hard-edged dramas that many people seem to find somewhat unimpressive for someone of Spielberg's caliber. Ready Player One should be a cautionary tale. Not the film itself, but everything surrounding it. Namely, the dangers of trying to revisit or recapture one's youth, because those are the moments that everyone seems to remember more fondly. And no matter how much we hate to admit it, we are all the same way. Artists of all kinds are always reinventing themselves, they're adapting, they're evolving based on how they grow and change as people. And Spielberg is no different. But you know what? Enough about all this doom and gloom. Let's talk about something a little bit more positive. I sincerely believe that Ready Player One could have been a groundbreaking film, the likes of many of Spielberg's earlier films, ironically enough, with a young director at the helm the likes of maybe a Jean Favreau or an Alfonso Cuaron, or even Jake Kasdan who made waves with Jumanji too. Directors who understand the nature of how modern video games work and have impacted us and still retain that sense of risk-taking ballsiness that defined Spielberg's early career. And as much as I hate giving Quentin Tarantino credit because that guy always seems so remarkably full of himself, He did once say that filmmakers are not giving audiences reason to go to the theaters, and a large part of that is down to audiences, in a way, turning to the older Hollywood filmmakers to give us the kind of indelible films that these filmmakers made in their youth, the kind of films they seemingly outgrew. Rather than turning to younger filmmakers and asking them to shape today's pop culture in the same way that those trailblazers did, back in the 70s and the 80s. Ready Player One is a cautionary tale, like the guy or the girl who tries to do something from their childhood and winds up getting hurt because they are older and not the same person anymore. Make your great films, Spielberg, but make the great films that are in line with the kind of filmmaker you are now instead of the filmmaker you were then. We'll still all love you just the same.